this is Vodcast 4. This is the last Vodcast dealing with rock types. Uh, specifically, in this one, we're going to look at metamorphic rocks. And just as before, we're going to look at some of the textures, the uh, minerals, and also we're going to take a little bit closer look at the rock uh, ID flowchart for this and try to gather some information from it. <clears throat> All right. So metamorphic rocks, quick review from the things that you should already know about these rocks. These are caused when pre-existing rocks, which is known as the parent rock, undergo intense heat and or pressure and actually change. It can just change its shape. It can actually change its chemical makeup also. It just depends on what process it undergoes. All right. <clears throat> so let's get out uh, the textures first. Texture on this is pretty straightforward. Uh, you could imagine, and I actually showed some animation on this before, that if you put a rock under extreme temperatures and pressures, what can actually happen is you could take a rock similar to this, right? this is an igneous rock, where you have crystals that are just kind of randomly uh, oriented. You could squish it down, and what can happen is that those crystals will begin to align themselves, kind of like this, into layers. All right, it's known as foliation. All right, and you can see that there are rock layers in here that it looks like they're all parallel to each other. That is a very common uh, texture found in metamorphic rocks, and it implies that there's been a lot of pressure applied to this. So foliated rocks uh, are the most common textures found here. But you can also have textures like this, where it's not foliated, but it actually presents with crystals. Or, where there's no crystals at all, it almost looks glassy. All right. So these non-foliated textures also tell us a lot about it. Um, but those are the main two groups of textures you've got. Your foliated, all right, now it may look like a bunch of layers, or it may just look really scaly, all right, or flaky. It's also known as foliated. Or non-foliated. As far as minerals, you're going to see some of the common ones that showed up in igneous rocks. You're going to see some of them that uh, showed up in sedimentary rocks. Because again, you can take those rocks, put them under intense heat and or pressure, and change them into this kind of uh, uh, rock. Uh, some of the ones that I will point out, uh, you can have micas, all right, which are the biotite, and the muscovite. Those are those flaky, uh, very soft minerals. Those can actually be formed in metamorphic processes. Uh, we can also have quartz, uh, which is really common in sandstone. All right, most sands are made out of this. If you put this under enough heat and pressure, what can happen is it actually recrystallizes into larger crystals of quartz, known as quartzite. Uh, we can have calcite, all right. things like limestone that we've discussed in the past, which forms through either water evaporating away, or in this case, this is biochemical. These are little itty bitty shells of uh, sea creatures that died and were compacted. Under the right circumstances, they can actually recrystallize into something like this, which is known as marble. Um, so you can have your calcite, should fizz, that'd be an easy one to pick out. You have quartz, you can have amphibole, uh, black hard stuff that's found in a lot of igneous rocks and therefore in these metamorphic rocks. And one other thing that I will point out that can show up that we haven't seen before, that some of you may actually have as a birthstone, is garnets. Garnets are these little soccer ball-like uh, crystals. Sometimes they're dodecahedrons uh, or other shapes. But they show up a lot in certain metamorphic rocks. Uh, that's a sure sign that you're dealing with metamorphic rock usually and that is one thing that you want to uh, be aware of. Now the main thing that you're going to be using to identify this again are those textures and compositions but this flowchart is exceptionally helpful. You should have this and again you can see right off the bat when you're trying to ident identify these you've got Two types, uh, two main groups here. You got foliated, textured, non foliated. So that's going to split it up quite easily. And then it can get into fine grained, coarse grained, um, glassy or not. Gets into the composition. 
and other properties that you'd be able to list, uh, whether it breaks up easily, contains micas or garnets, or can easily be scratched so you have a little hardness test, um, and other things, whether it has calcite or not. And then it'll tell you the rock name and where it could have possibly come from, known as the parent rock. Now, one thing I want to focus in on here is up here in the foliated. Again, foliated and non-foliated describe somewhat the uh, process and how they formed. There are two ways that you can uh, cause a rock to undergo metamorphosis and that change. And that is either through regional metamorphism or contact metamorphism. And we describe these a little bit uh, in the first vodcast with rock types, but let's do a quick review. Uh, regional metamorphism happens over a really large area when uh, an intense pressure and heat from being buried uh, causes a rock to change. Now again, that can change its shape, or it can actually cause minerals to recrystallize into new minerals in different types. Rocks that have the foliated texture is usually due to this regional metamorphism, intense pressures causing those minerals to realign uh, themselves perpendicular to the pressure. So all of these deal with regional metamorphism. Um, and also, what can happen here, if you look at the parent rock, you start off with, say, like a mudstone, like a slate, or excuse me, a shale. And then you can also turn that into that mudstone into schist. All right, careful how you pronounce that, schist. And then you can even take that and turn it into, it could be a, a parent rock, for nice. What we have here is uh, different grades of metamorphism. The lower we go on this uh, requires more heat and more pressure to, to produce. So we know that if you have a nice rock, a metamorphic rock, it's undergone more heat and pressure, uh, a higher grade of metamorphism than schist would. Or same thing, schist undergoes more heat and pressure, a higher grade of metamorphism than slate would. So that gives us some information on the conditions in which it formed. With non-foliated, what's mostly going on here is contact metamorphism of some kind, possibly. Not always. Um, what happens in contact metamorphism is that it's in contact with uh, magma deep underground, which chemically interacts with it over the course of years or thousands of years and chemically changes it without a lot of pressure. Uh, or it could even be just really hot water. That really hot water can uh, seep into cracks and fractures in the rock uh, and recrystallize, and again, without a lot of pressure, causes a chemical change. Uh, that's a possibility. Usually foliated uh, is primarily only uh, regional metamorphism, but non-foliated could be a little bit of both. So this is going to be the biggest help in identifying them. Um, you should know, uh, be able to pick out the texture quite easily, and then going through the different properties of composition, identify them easily.